In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can draw this cute cartoon baby cow from start to finish using the iPad and Procreate. Just like all my videos, it's in real time too, so you can follow along every single step of the way from start to finish without any time lapse or edits. And if you're a return viewer to my channel, you might notice something a little different today. I included a bonus picture and picture view, so you've got a top-down angle and a side view to watch me as I draw. And if you do follow along, I urge you to share your artwork online. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, post it there and tag me at BJ Dell for a chance to see your artwork featured in one of my upcoming videos, just like the artists you see here that followed along with the last video of the Triceratops. But today, it's all about the baby cow, so let's get started. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and draw a cute cartoon baby cow. Starting out, I'm using a 4,000 by 4,000 pixel 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my brush, I'm gonna start out using my Sketch Ink Shade Brush. That's part of my cartooning pack for Procreate. You can get it on Gumroad. The link's down in the description below. And then once we start inking, we're gonna switch over to the standard Inker Streamline. For my color palette, once again, got this pre-made. So if you wanna download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's tutorial to follow along with, you can get that for free on my website. bjdell.com is the website. The link's in the description below underneath the YouTube reference materials page on there. You will find a link to that. And then finally, on my Apple Pencil, I have the ProDraw Grip. ProDraw is a company that I started last year. We make accessories for digital artists like yourself. The ProDraw Grip is our first product. Works with both the Gen 1 and Gen 2 Apple Pencils. Gives you more comfort, better line control. I highly recommend it. The link's down in the description below for that. And if you purchase one, number one, thanks. Number two, it helps support the channel. So you rock. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna switch over my color to this blue color here. And we're gonna use, once again, that Sketch Ink Shade Pencil or brush. And I'm just gonna start out with a basic oval here. So basic shape to begin with, and then a smaller oval down here. So this is gonna be the head. It's gonna be the upper portion. This one's the lower kind of jaw, bottom portion of the head. And then using multiple shapes like this then allows us to go ahead and connect them together. So I'm gonna use a curve line back here. And as this comes down here in the front, it's gonna curve in and then back out like this. You can see that little curve right there. Now with this, it's gonna be a three quarters perspective. So if I draw a center line in here, you can kind of see what we're going for as far as perspective goes. So with the center line, everything here to the left, you see there's a lot more space that this takes up. It's because this is closer to the viewer, this is gonna be further away. So everything here to the left is gonna be bigger than the corresponding item to the right of it. It's gonna help us keep the, the size in mind and the perspective as we go forward. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna go ahead and make another oval here, just kind of further down and jutting out a little bit further here on the side. This is gonna be the snout. And then we'll draw another kind of half oval there underneath for the bottom portion. Now, as you can see, this is really sketchy. I'm looking up here too, because I've got my monitor here so I can see what's coming out of here so I can see what you guys are seeing. But as you can see, all the lines, really sketchy. This is supposed to be loose. We wanna get the ideas from up here, out and down here. We can go ahead, ahead and fine tune everything and add the details into the next stage, which is the inking stage. That's where I really fine tune everything. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and I'm gonna start to draw kind of a curve line here for that bridge coming up. And we'll draw an oval here for this eye on the right. And then we'll draw another oval here on the left-hand side for this one. Once again, this one being bigger than the one on the right because of that perspective. Get the pupils in there and then the irises as those come around. Knock in a couple of eyebrows there. And then here we can kind of continue this down in a three-dimensional shape. So it's gonna come down here and then curve back around and out. So we can use that to get the nostrils in there where those need to be, just like so. Just kind of fine tune these lines. And then moving up then, we're gonna do another oval here for the right ear and an oval here for the left. Once again, smaller, bigger. 
So using these basic shapes really helps us get out the volume that these areas take up. So once we go in to add some actual definition to these, we know exactly how big they're supposed to be. So instead of trying to get them to match up, as long as we follow in with those shapes, we've already got that, that basic volume set, which just allows us to go in and fine tune the overall characteristics of the design like that. We can continue that same process then up here, add in some ovals here for the horns. Same premise here, those ovals help us see the size. And then we can fine tune here. This isn't gonna come all the way down though. It's gonna be kind of obscured behind that part of the head. So this part here is not even gonna be something that we worry about because it's gonna be behind that part of the head. All right, so there we go. There's the head, we've got that done. From here, we can go ahead and move on to the body. I'm gonna reposition the head and shrink it down, move it up just a tad bit so we've got some room to work. Now for the body, same idea here, basic shapes. So I'm gonna draw just an oval here for the body. We'll draw another oval here for the first leg, smaller oval here for the second. Once again, this one's smaller, not necessarily because of the three quarters perspective, it's gonna be behind on the other side of the cow. So that's why those legs are gonna be smaller. This one, once again, is on this side of the body. So this leg is gonna be bigger. And then the one back here then, once again, it's gonna be smaller. I'm gonna draw a line here for these front ones and then a line here for these back ones. We wanna make sure that these all line up on the same plane. So doing those lines there kind of help us visualize that and make sure that they are all the same size and on the same plane there. darken everything back here. And then finally, just do a squiggly line back on the back for the tail. An oval back there to help us see the, the shape and size of the tail. And then kind of almost a, a leaf shape back there. So, all right, that's gonna be our overall sketch design. From here then, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is, like I said, really fine tuning everything. That's the inking stage, so let's do that now. To begin with, I'm gonna come up here to my layers menu. I'm gonna make a new layer on top of layer one. This is gonna be our inks layer. And then layer one, I'm gonna tap the end here for blend mode. I'm gonna drop down the opacity of this to about 30%. Looking at my monitor over here to see what you guys are seeing. I think, so maybe 30 is a little bit too far. Let's go, yeah. This one about 38, 39%. So the idea is we want to see the sketch layer. We don't want it to be too dark that it takes focus away from what we're doing on the lines layer. Now that we've got that done, we're on layer two. I'm going to switch my brush now to that streamline inker that we talked about earlier. So I'll tap on that. And then for my color, I'm going to come back up to my color palette. Then I'm going to select this dark brown color that we've got here. It's almost like a brownish black. And then we'll kind of jump in. I'm going to zoom in here so we can see a little bit better. And we'll start here with the snout. I'm not gonna worry too much right now about doing separate line weights. I, I've talked about that in my videos before of determining where the light source is coming in from and thicker, thinner lines. If you wanna learn all about that, definitely check out one of my other videos. This one, we'll just kinda jump in and, and go with it. So we'll get the oval in here. And you can see here that I'm not really worried about making sure that all of these ink lines match up with my sketch lines. The sketch, it's just a suggestion of where things go. What I find is if you are worried too much about tracing every single line perfectly from your sketch layer, you really lose some of that kind of loose organic feel when you head into the inks layer. So that's why I don't worry as long as it's close and everything is in perspective, that's what I go with. I'll do this line here with a taper line down into the nose there. So with this tapered line, that's why I love this brush. That's what this brush does. However, 
The brush doesn't do it. You have to be part of the process too. I say that because I get this question a lot. People will get this brush and say, something's broke. I didn't get the right brush. It's not doing the tapers that I see in your video. I guarantee it does. The problem is you have to become accustomed to the technique. So this works a lot like a regular inking brush. If you were using a brush pen, in real life, a traditional one, there is a technique to get the tapers. The technique is the same here. So for this taper here at the beginning of a line, it's a light press that goes into a harder press. If you wanna taper at the end of the line, same thing, a harder press into a lighter press, and then kind of as you let up pressure, let up your wrist or your, your arm as well and pull the, the Apple Pencil up. So I say this because I get this question a lot. Also, I get the question, well, I've got everything, but also what are your settings? What's your pressure curve? It's all 100% default. If you've got this brush, you've got all the settings that I have. That's kind of the whole idea behind uh, buying brushes from creators is that you're getting the exact same brush with all the same settings. So if you're not seeing this result, if you have the same brush, it takes practice. That's my number one recommendation there. Uh, so feel free to play around with it. I honestly, I think the, the best way to, to practice is to just draw lines like this over and over again. Uh, just do, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400 lines like that on a blank canvas until you feel comfortable with the amount of pressure that you need to either apply or not apply. Uh, and then here you'll see these irises that I'm going around. Those have a lighter line, much like those tapers. I'm just not pressing as hard. So that's what's giving us that lighter line around those. I'm going to hold down here in the background to select white because I want to add in some highlights here in the eyes. So I'm just going to knock these in. I am going to have the light source coming in from the top left hand corner. So these are on kind of that left side there and then switching back to our original color. All right, let's see what we've got so far. Now, next up, I think I'm gonna do this line here, kind of coming around. I'm gonna start it though further out. I'm gonna start it in the ear. And the reason why I do this, and I do this quite a bit in my work, is because once you have this started outside, you kind of have the motion that you need. You know how much pressure that you need to apply. And it feels more comfortable moving into the actual start of the line if you start the line earlier. And then we can go in and erase that. So you'll see here, I'll start back here. Kind of bring that down and around like that. Gives me the line that I want, the thickness and everything. Then with my eraser, I can just come back in and pull out that part that went over the, the overlap there. All right, we'll continue back here then with the ear. Once again here, this is where I start to add in detail. So you see I've got this tapered line here. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. So that little kind of overlap of that flap of skin there, that's where I start to add in little details. Once again here, this line, not as much pressure because it's on the inside. Back here for the the horn, once again here, I'm gonna add in some little details here, some overlap on that horn there. We'll do the same thing on the horn here on this other side. However, as you can see here, I've got this line going through it. I could erase, but there's a lot easier way to do this. And that's by going up to your layers menu and making a new layer on top of this. So we've got two lines layers going on right now. With this layer done then, going back to my brush here, I'm gonna zoom in so we can see. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pull in that same taper around that I had before and pull that there. So you can see here, we've got this overlapping line, but since they're on two separate layers, it's totally fine because we can go back to layer two now. I can grab my eraser and I can erase that overlap section right there. Super easy. Going back to my brush now, I can add in some extra tapers like this. If I wanna add in some details, I can do that over here on this one as well. Little things like that are what finish out a design and what I add in during this inking process that I don't add in during the sketch stage. Once we've got those done, then we can pinch them back together so all of our lines are back on one layer. Pull them back out so you can kind of see what we're left with. I'm gonna go ahead here and 
work on this line. Once again, going past here. I am gonna start out with a taper here. I'm not gonna connect this line to the head. And this is another kind of tip that I'll give you here is I wanna start out with the taper here and pulling it up. You can kind of see the way that my arm is. I'm kind of wonky here. If that's the case, if it feels off, if it doesn't feel natural, the stroke should feel natural going through. So this is when it's convenient to twist your canvas. So here, having a curved line coming up and around, it feels a lot more natural with my arm. So I start with the, the taper here, bring that up into the curve. Once again, coming past that, so I have control over that line and where it stops. Now I can come back in with that eraser and erase if I need to. For this ear, we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing that we did previously. We're gonna make a new layer so we don't have to worry about erasing our previous lines here. And I will start to pull this in. Once again here, we're gonna go in with a, oops, get back to my brush here. I'm gonna pull in a line here, and then we'll pull in another line here. Once again, this overlap is fine. If you don't like a taper, you can always come into with the eraser and kind of clean up tapers. If you're not totally comfortable with that putting pressure down, releasing pressure, that's another tip is just coming in with the eraser and kind of faking it a little bit. With that done then, we can come back to our layer two and erase those overlaps. Once again, we're back there. I've got another errant line over here that I need to clean up. And of course here now I'm hitting that line that I've already done. You can see this kind of illustrates my point of why it's important or easier to make those multiple layers because you don't have to do stuff like that over here. Now that those are done, we can pinch together and we're back ready to continue. I'm gonna zoom back in here for this one. Get the inside of this ear done. A little bit heavier line there at the bottom for where that weight is. And then for the eyebrows here, I like a heavier line on the bottom, lighter line at the top. Once again, that kind of adds in a little bit of weight to that line, a little bit of weight to the eyebrow at the bottom. It gives a, a kind of shadowed effect to it without even adding a shadow here. And you can kind of see what result that gives. Pretty cool. All right, moving back down here to the bottom. Trying to zoom in and out like really smooth and easy. Uh, I zoom in and out so much during my regular work, my personal work. I try not to do it too much for the videos because people seem to get annoyed by it. Uh, so if you watch my videos, this isn't actually how I draw. I'm all over the place all the time. Uh, believe me, I wish it would be easier to follow along with doing that because it is kind of detrimental to some of these videos at times, because it's not how I usually draw. Uh, so as you can see here too, I'm adding in this little extra part for the hoof. This front part is smaller, takes up less space than this part back here, because once again, with that perspective we have going on, this part's further away, this part's closer to the viewer. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna twist the canvas because when I want to draw in this line, I want a light line with a little bit of a curve and my arm and my hand work better together going this direction rather than trying to go like this. And it's the same thing if you were drawing regularly with paper, just twisting the paper around, it's the exact same thing here. All right, we'll continue this line down, starting with a taper there. I want that a little bit different direction there. Let's pull this line back just a tad. It's getting bigger back there, smaller there to the front. Let's see if I can do this this way. Not really. I'm gonna twist again. There we go. And then we'll continue this one. Make sure my lines are lined up here. locked in and I think I want that one a little bit thicker back there I said I wasn't gonna worry too much about line weights but that one is really kind of thin 
as I start to lose battery here. That one is really kind of thin compared to the regular one up front or up back there. Same thing here. See this, this line here is a lot thicker. So this line should kind of have that same thickness on this side. That's a little bit better. All right, pull them back out to see what we're left with. There we go. Let's go ahead and get the tail then. Bring a taper line here up and around. Back down the center. And then have a thicker line here in the back. And a little bit thinner line here in the front to kind of show the weight there of that. All right, and there we go. That's gonna be the inks. Let's turn off the sketch to see what we're left with. I don't like the way that this comes up here. I want it to come further out, so I'm gonna fix that line real quick. This is the stage where you can kind of pull back and see, okay, does this look right? Does something look off here? Do I need to adjust something? And get that line because it wants to taper down into there because those are technically you know the same area, so those are kind of connected there. So I think that looks better. One thing also I want to add is some spots around. So I didn't add these in the sketch stage because once again, don't want to get too crazy with the details. And there's really no reason to draw stuff like this in during the sketch stage. You can do this very easily here during the inks. So we'll draw some spots around him. Get these in there. Just Kind of random, no real rhyme or reason behind where they're falling. So there we go. And then I'm gonna do one around the eye too, but I'm gonna make a new layer for that one so I can kind of go, once again, start the lines out and have a little bit more control over where I end up and then just erase. All right, go ahead and pinch those together again. And you can see what we're left with for our lines. I think it looks pretty good. From here then, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is adding the color flats. So let's do that now. So to add the color flats, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer on top of this one. I'm gonna press down and drag it underneath layer two. So right now we've got our lines, we've got our color flats, and then we've got our sketch, which is turned off. With that done then, I wanna go back up to layer two, and I wanna set this as reference. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to drag and drop colors here onto layer three, using layer two as kind of a coloring book guide as, as far as where they go. Uh, having these on a separate layer works wonders when we go in to actually add the shadows and highlights, which is the next step. Since they're on a separate layer, it makes things so, so easy. With that done then, back to layer three, back to our color palette, and I've got this kind of off-white color here, cream color, we'll drag and drop that in. I'm gonna hit continue refilling or continue filling up here and we'll tap the areas that we need. Back up to the color palette, the light brown, I've got that for, we'll use that for the spots, for the upper part of the tail. And I think that's pretty much everything there. Pink is next, so the inside parts of the ears and the snouts. Next up, we've got blue for the irises there. I want to make sure that I didn't hit the lines there. This is really important that you make sure that you don't hit the lines because if you do, you're going to see that right there will ruin your design. So make sure that you don't do that. Now I'm going to hold down white here in the background. So we can select that because we need the eyes colored in. They look colored in right now because we've got the white background, but if we turn that off, you can see that they are missing. So let's go ahead and drop the white in for that. You can also tell too, turning that off, this eyebrow here isn't actually connected. So I need to come back to my reference lines layer and just make sure that those lines match up there because that filled that in with white or the off white and we don't really want that. All right, so back to my color flats here. The next color we have is the dark gray. We'll use that for the eyebrows here. Continue refilling. And then for the hooves down here. And then the tail. And then finally, we've got the 
kind of brownish yellow color. We'll use that for the horns. And there we go. Those are our color flats. As you can tell, pretty quick. That area of the process is the fastest of anything. Using that reference and then dragging and dropping and using the, the continue filling, super, super speedy. Now we're ready to move into the next fun part, adding the shadows and the highlights, shadows being first. So let's do that now. Let's come up to our layers menu. I'm gonna make a new layer on top of our flats. So we've got lines, we have our shadows layer, we have our color flats, and then our sketch, which is turned off. Let's go ahead and tap on this one. And we wanna set this as clipping mask. So what clipping mask does is it allows us to color in on a separate layer. It only shows up on the areas that this is clipped to, which is our color flats. So if we color out here, nothing happens. It only shows up if we color inside here. With that done then, I'm gonna go up to my color palette. I'm gonna switch back then colors here. I'm gonna switch over to this kind of maroonish red color. Once again, that layer four, still using that standard ink or streamline. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop in the colors here on these areas. Now, I'm gonna turn off reference on layer two because I wanna fill in some more larger areas and then I can drag and drop the color. If I have reference turned on though, it's just gonna fill in everything like it did with the color flat. So we need to make sure we turn that off and then we tap back on our shadows layer because we don't wanna color in on our lines layer. All right, with that done then, we've got the light source, like I say, coming in top left because of the way that we've got our highlights in our eyes. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit so we can see. I'm gonna start to block in pretty big area here. So we've got underneath this eyebrow, I'm gonna bring kind of a curve down here and around into that eyebrow. Bring this around that backside of the horn. And then once we get a pretty big area here and we have everything connected, we can drag and drop our color in and it'll fill that in. Now, if you get everything filled in, that means there's some area here that's not touching. You don't have the lines completely touching on there. So you just need to see what the, the culprit of that is and, and make some adjustments there. All right. Let me erase just a tad bit of this coming back down, just kind of fine tuning the flow of that. And I think that looks pretty good. Before I make any more adjustments, I'm gonna go ahead and come down here to the snout, get a big area of this filled in, and we'll get down in underneath the snout too. All right. Get the insides here. And now that I have quite a few different colors with the shadow on top of it, now we can make some adjustments to see what the shadow is gonna look like. Cause obviously we don't want our shadow being this dark maroon color. So we're gonna come back up to the layers menu. I'm gonna tap on N for blend mode. And then I'm gonna drop down the opacity of this down to say about 30, 25, 30%. I think that looks pretty good. It always looks lighter on the monitor than what it looks actually on the iPad. So trying to, to guess and see what's gonna look good there at, at home for you watching is always kind of a chore. So now I'm just gonna kind of continue adding in some of the, the shadows down here. We'll get down here on the belly. This one back here will be completely filled in because it's kind of in the background there. Same thing here. I'm gonna fill this one completely in. We'll get under here and down and around. Get the underside here of the tail. I also always have a glare on my screen because of the way that it's sitting in my studio light sitting in front of me. So sometimes if you watch my videos, I might miss a section and there's 
like a little hole or a, an area I didn't fill in, it's usually because I can't see it. <laughs> so half of the time I'm kind of running a little bit blind on these videos just because I want the lighting to, to be good. And even with the matte screen protector, which really doesn't give you a huge amount of glare, it's just the way that everything's sitting. There's just enough to, to kind of block out certain areas that I need to see. I'll get these filled in here. That weight of that ear over top is gonna cast a shadow down there. You also see too, that's why I look up at my monitor quite a bit, because a lot of the times I'm actually <laughs> using the one up there rather than what I'm seeing down here to, to actually draw with. Of course, this new idea of setting up a, a secondary camera kind of proves that point. I know before you really couldn't see it, so get in underneath this eyebrow. So I got a big enough section filled in, then I can drag and drop, or I can just fill the entire thing in by hand here. Once again, I'm trying to get out of my glare. All right, I think that looks good. I wanna kinda change this one a little bit, the way this comes up. I don't really like the way that came up in the, the eyebrow. All right, looks good. Let me, uh, I think that's all right. So here, the one thing that I don't like when I fill in large areas like this is this whole area that I dragged and dropped initially. You really can't tell that it's shaded in just because there's not that shaded value and the non-shaded value. Like here, we've got the cream, we've got the shaded. You can tell it's shaded because they're right up against each other. Here, we don't have that lighter color. So this is when I like to come in with my eraser. So if we hold down on the eraser, it's gonna set it to the same brush that we're using for drawing. And I just like to pull away a little bit of the shadows. So now you can actually see that there's a shadow there because we have those two different values. So that goes a long way into making that work. With that done then, let's go ahead and come up here to our color palette again. I'm gonna switch over to this dark blue. We're gonna use this for some shadows inside the eyes. So we'll bring this around. And then same thing here, we'll bring this around. It's kind of got a taper here at both ends. It kind of disappears towards the bottom. This just gives a little bit more of a three-dimensional look to the eyes. 5%. Am I going to be able to get done with this? I do not know. Let's, let's hope so. And just a couple of dots in there. All right. Looks good. So that's pretty much it for shadows. Let's go ahead and move on to highlights next. So to do this back up to the layers menu, another new layer, we're going to tap this and set it to clipping mask as well. So now we've got the lines, we've got highlights, we've got shadows, we've got color flats and then our sketch, which, like I said, it's turned off, so it doesn't matter. The highlights, we've got those set as clipping mask as well as the shadows. So here, it's not gonna clip to the shadows. If you've got multiple clipping masks on top of each other, they always go down to whatever that first layer is that they're clipped to. So these, just like the shadows, they're gonna only show up on the areas that are filled in on the color flats. So with that done then, let's go ahead and grab white here. And of course with white, we're not gonna be able to use a ton of highlights here because the body of the cow itself is so white, off-white, we're not gonna have a lot of highlights showing up. So the heavy lifting is gonna be done by kind of the horns and the, the snout and the spots. So I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see a little bit better. And as I zoom in, I can see already places that I've missed with the, with the shadows, like I said, not zooming in and out too much really affects the quality of your work. That's why I have a lot of areas like that that always pop up on my designs on my YouTube channel because I don't get in tight enough. All right, so there's that. Let's go ahead and I think I'm gonna hit the, kind of some of these
spots here just so, like I said, we've got some highlights showing up here. Since we're not going to be able to use any on the body, get one around the snout here on this side. Maybe even some oval highlights here. Kind of lock one in to get a nice tight oval. Smaller one down there. Looks pretty good. Continuing back here on the tail. Around the top part here. Those spots. All right, and I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and grab the layers menu and for blend mode, we'll drop this down to question mark. Maybe about 59% looks pretty good, 59, 60%. Here's where you might wanna use multiple layers for your shadows because we have multiple colors. So that opacity setting might look good on one color, but it might be too high for another color. So if you're seeing that, if it looks too dark on one, too bright on another, just try multiple highlight layers and that way you can adjust them separate. All right, so there we go. There's pretty much our finished design. Let's go ahead and add in a quick background now to kind of complete this. So coming up to our layers menu, I'm gonna come down to the bottom. I'm gonna make a new layer. And then my color palette, I'm gonna switch this to yellow. And let's just do kind of a, a sun here in the background. Holding down the Apple Pencil and holding down with our finger kind of locks that in. We'll drag and drop that and then I'll kind of reposition here. So it looks good wherever we've got it at. It's always hard with a circle to get a design to match up and get it to look good so you don't have too many tangents going on, but that looks good. Next up then, back up to the layers menu, another new layer. Drag this down underneath the circle here and to our color palette, we'll choose the green, kind of use a, a flat oval down here. Put some grass down there and kind of zooming in here, we can add some blades of grass. Once again, just using that tapering technique, just get some different blades of grass coming up. Make some bigger just by pressing down harder. We can make some smaller by pressing down lighter, however you want to do it. All right. And then finally, I want to add a little bit of a shadow to this because of the shadow that we've got going on with the character. So I'm going to make a new layer here and I'm going to set this as clipping mask, just like we did before. It's only going to show up on the green now. Back to my colors and to that red. And we'll just kind of pull in a shadow around the character here. Drag and drop the color in. And then coming back up to the layers menu, hitting N for blend mode, dropping down the opacity till we get it to look right. Yep, sure. That looks good. 20% or so looks all right. And then finally, let me go ahead, make another new layer here and sign this and we will be done with today's tutorial. All right, so there we go. How to draw a cute baby cow from start to finish using Procreate, the iPad, and the Pro Draw Grip, along with the Apple Pencil. Uh, but appreciate you guys watching today. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Helps other people see it on YouTube. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos like this one. Also, like I said, at the front of the video, if you guys do take part in any of these, you follow along with the tutorials, definitely share your work online. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, post them there and tag me at BJ Dell. So not only do I get a chance to see them, other people get a chance to see them too, but you also have a chance to possibly see your artwork featured in one of my upcoming videos, just like the people you saw in today's. 
the start of the video with the Triceratops. So once again, thanks for watching, thanks for following along, and thanks for sharing your artwork when you do. As for me, I can also be found online at bjdell.com. And that's it for today's video. Really appreciate you guys watching, and until next time, keep creating.